Okay, so uh, welcome to uh, Social Media Fridays. Uh, each week, yeah, we uh, uh, meet to wind down and uh, we uh, talk about uh, what happens uh, uh, or what has happened in the field of social media in, in the previous seven days. Um, with us today, we have Daniel and also Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Um, he's also a Google top contributor on uh, the AdSense and uh, the um, um, Google Plus Help community. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Looks like we're working. <laughs> you laughing at me, Mr. Taki? Uh, well, you know, that's the joys of... Oh, there you go. I was going to say it was the joys of um, Hangouts on Air. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I was laughing that when people were being critical the other day, of which we'll be discussing uh, later in uh, this hour, um, yeah, but th 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 they were talking about uh, you know, things which were wrong and, and some of them were saying it was bad to start late and you know, bad to answer the phone. I was just thinking back uh, over the uh, years, we've had um, dogs barking, um, <laughs> <laughs> electric lightning storms and thunder, um, phones ringing. Um, I think I even had an argument with one of my sons one day. Um, anyway, uh, it's all good fun. First um, topic, Masataki, is um, one that's posted by uh, our good friend Meher Bagat. Um, and uh, Meher hopefully will be joining us later in this hour. Um, this one uh, was a question on um, her profile stats. Uh, her, her Google Plus uh, profile stats had some unusual activity. I'll run these up the screen, but in, in essence, uh, her views um, um, dropped um, by, uh, it looks like about 600,000 or something like that. Um, and then apparently came back again more or less I, I honestly don't know uh, um, why Mahir would be worrying about her blue, uh, her, um, her views, but anyway, um, I'd like to know what you think about it. Well, it's been happening. It's been happening to many accounts. Um, my one went down as well by tune of a, a few hundred thousand a couple of days ago. Um, no clear indications as to why that is happening. So we can, we can, I suppose, speculate whether it's a bug. I, the number's gone down by mistake, for some reason, or it may be some corrective measure on part of Google. So perhaps the numbers had been inflated previously, and it's coming. It came down to the, to the, uh, the correct level, as it were. Either way, it's not something that people should really worry about. Um, <laughs> there have been a number of posts in the Google Plus Help community. People seem to be really worried about um, the views count. Perhaps indicate, perhaps believing that the decrease indicates something serious about their accounts and so forth. I don't think that's the case. It's, as I've said, no word, no clear indications why this is happening, but it is happening to quite a lot of people. So if you're seeing this and if you're a bit worried that it's only you, that's not the case. It's happening to many people. And it's not something that you should really worry about. But then I have to disclose uh, that I believe the views count to be completely meaningless and I mean, it's not something that you should put, put too much faith into. Or I, 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 yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I, I believe that the views count was introduced to distract attention um, from what Google refers to as the, the social number, um, which is a, um, an amalgam of stats from um, 
views to followers to uh, engagement um, and plus ones and, and um, members of communities and, and, and so on. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I was running out of steam then. So, um, yeah, I think I honestly don't see the point of it because, um, as you know, um, I have been, I have managed to inflate the numbers quite considerably because when it, this particular feature was released, this number was released, I think it was the beginning of April this year, I had shade over 250,000 views. And within six months, so within half a year, I managed to accumulate uh, 11, almost 11.6 11 million views. Most of the views that I have managed to accumulate derive from images that I have uploaded to local Google Plus pages that appear in various guises um, for local search on maps, on your mobile, sort of what's nearby, those kind of things. Um, so, for example, I have a photograph of a shop front. Um, admittedly, it's central London, it's very popular, but in less, in a period shorter than six months, I'd say about four months or so, that particular picture has accumulated over half a million views. So there are many ways to, in a sense, artificially inflate this figure. Um, and as such, it's not particularly useful. I have issues with that side of things. But another thing that I'm increasingly convinced of is that it's really not a nice thing to have because how could I put it? I think it's discouraging for new users. Let's say you're starting with Google Plus now. You haven't, you know, you haven't um, explored Google Plus, and you think, okay, why don't I, why don't I give it a go? And now you join it, and the humans are competitive by nature. And you see people with millions and millions of views. I think any I think part of any person has that competitive nature that wants to say okay I want to I want to get to that height I want to accumulate that kind of numbers and that's going to be tough you know because people would have had head start if you like and new people joining the platform will forever be catching up Yeah. So, in that sense, it might be off-putting uh, for newcomers. Um, it doesn't really tell you about engagement because it's an amalgamate figure of all sorts of views. Um, there's no qualitative differentiation between good engagement and picture your picture that you have on Google Plus being shown almost incidentally or as illustration to a search query. And I think that's why the figure doesn't or can't tell you anything of any significance. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, will we move on from Maher's question? Yeah. Okay, well, I'd like to thank you for a, a really significant answer. Um, number uh, two on, on uh, our list today uh, came from uh, Michael Ginsburg. Uh, the 15 best browser extensions to improve your social media marketing. 
Um, I had a look at this list myself. Um, uh, it, a lot of the things um, I don't think I'd, I'd want to use, like something to make gifts with. And um, anyway, look, I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Taki. Um, what, what, what's your take on this one? Um, I think I use two or three out of these fifteen, and I don't think I have. I use the service, but I don't use the browser extension. How about you, Jim? Do you use any of them? Um, let me ha let me have another look at look at the list. Um, bear with me one second. Yeah, shall I just run through the the list? Yeah. Um, uh, well, well, actually, let, let me uh, just give you a, a quick thing. Um, I, I uh, quick quickly looking at them. Um, I don't think I I use. Um, any, I, I don't use Pinterest. I don't use Instagram. Um, they're not not something that um, uh, that interests me. Um, so yes, look, would you uh, please go ahead? Okay. So the fifteen extensions, Safari, Firefox, and Chrome extensions, social media marketers are as follows: number one, Buffer. Number two, Giphy, which um, I suppose creates GIFs, GIFs, whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, number three, Pocket, Instapaper, Evernote. So that's sort of noting things and reading something later, that kind of thing. Number four, Instagram for Chrome. Five, Bitly, the URL shortener. Six, Riffle. And apparently it's, it's for Twitter. You click on Riffle icon or Twitter username, and the extension opens up a display of that user's data, including other social accounts, Twitter stats, most used hashtags, categories, top mentions, top URLs, etc. Seven, window resizer. So you can check your tweets, posts, and updates on any screen, so it emulates, I think, different screen sizes. That sounds useful, actually. Eight, write tag, analyzes hashtags. Nine, social analytics, quick view of share stats on any page. Ten, awesome screenshot. I think that's quite clear what it does. Eleven, Fiddly Mini. 12, Clout, social media influence score. 13, Pin It Button. 14, Circle Count, so that's for Google+. 15, Social Fixer for Facebook. So I know the existence of quite a few of them. Um, but I haven't installed any of these as browser extension. The only one that I might be tempted to install is number seven, Window Resizer. That might be useful just to check how different screen resolutions uh, will render your in my case, um, a site. <coughs> Otherwise, I use Pinterest and Circle Count, but then I do not use the browser extension. Okay, mate. Um, yes, How about you? Uh, I attempted uh, to use any of them. I beg your pardon? Um, are you tempted to use any of these? No. Uh, look, <laughs> um, yeah. social media. Look, I, I, look, I regard it in this way. Um, when, 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 I mean, it's 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 a means of communication. It is not the communication. 
Um, it's um, a way to interact um, with people and reach a broader range of people than you would otherwise be physically able to, to uh, um, in, in normal circumstances. So, um, you know, I'm I, I, I'm I, I'm not a, I'm not fussed on uh, um, doing things like animating gifs and so on because that's not what, who I am. I I, I don't uh, get a kick out of. Uh, um, doing things that are a little bit airy fairy. If it's a serious issue um, that, that, that I'm passionate about, um, I'm, I'm happy to you know, join in and make a fool of myself um, and, and uh, state my case. Um, but uh, as for, you know, or, I mean, I really want to vomit sometimes when I see some of the airy fairy frippery that, that, that goes on, on on social media. And and they're rewarded with um, followers, and you know everyone thinks they're wonderful. Da, 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 da. Uh, but really, I think they've achieved nothing. Um, the, 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 the type, the caliber of person that uh, that they gather behind them are just as airy fairy as they are. And um, when it comes to the crunch, if they really have something important to say, they've got no audience. That's my opinion. Interesting, isn't it? So, in a sense, more strategy, less authenticity, you become less genuine, and in the end, less social. Well, um, not necessarily, that, um, because a lot of people make a living at um, social, so they need those numbers to um, justify their existence, um, to justify their paycheck. Um, so in, in that case, um, uh, they are right and I am wrong. Um, but uh, as far as um, creating you know, meaningful relationships um, and understanding, literally understanding, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, a lady from Brazil uh, recently um, uh, um, published a series of photos, just a photo and a name. Um, and mine was um, uh, the Copacabana Beach. And um, it didn't dawn on me till later that I had uh, posted, uh, um, well, commented on, on, on a, uh, that lady's post on, on another subject uh, in Brazil. And she'd remembered my. Uh, Association with that, and she'd done that with all of the people that in her in her circle, like in, in her sphere of influence, if you like. That uh, is powerful social media. I'll, I'll never. I, I still see that lady's face when I say this. You see that? So that that's very effective. She remembered, um, and she made an obscure reference, which um, was absolutely spot on. That's um, um, using social media to me. Uh, if that lady rang me tomorrow and up to borrow five hundred dollars, I would send it. Um, no, I wouldn't have got five hundred dollars. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but do you, you know what I mean? I trust that lady now because she has taken the time to care. You know, and whereas people that sort of make posts about. Um, Oh look, I I really don't know. You know, like Australia, love it or leave it. You know, the yobbos are out at the moment, uh, um, talking about um, you know being uh, like like there's a lot of jingoism and, and nationalistic fervor going on here, and the 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 like the, the Liberal Party government here is whipping up uh, xenophobia by the bucket load. You know, um, it's promising to protect us from the Muslim hordes. Um, and um, you know it just, it just makes me so angry. Um, but um, um, you know the, the people that capitalise on this uh, hatred and, and so on with the, the, the smarmy Facebook posts that is that that is not I mean that's not social media that's just stupidity and it's just people underlining their gormlessness. Um, but this lady from Brazil. She won me for life because she did something really, really clever. Really clever. So it's the personal, isn't it? So there's the, obviously the social in a sense that something quite big. 
But at the same time, what is extremely important is that personal touch, if you like. Does that make sense? So oh, yes, it does. And, and, and all of those um, browser extensions won't help you do that. You know, it's got to be in your head. Hmm. It, the, it does raise an interesting sort of question stroke prospect in that you know, how much of your personality shines through the, the platform, as it were? You know, do you, are you there as you, the genuine person? Well, look, look I, I don't think you can be effective um, without being it. And, and the perspective I come at it is this. Um, I've been on the internet, uh, uh, shopsafe.com was registered in 1996 um, and um, we've made our living out of the internet um, for a long time. I mean, it's, it, the, the internet um, uh, it, it isn't required to um, uh, pay our bills, um, but um, over the years um, we've made a lot of money uh, out of the internet. Um, I spent it all, um, but uh, uh, lost my train of thought. I got distracted thinking about all the money I wasted. Um, uh, yeah, uh, help me out. Give, give me a clue. Get me back on track, Mister Taki. Well, you're talking about sort of the, um, yeah, if you like, the pre-social media days. Oh, and yes, you're talking yes. about the personal touch and your okay. personality shining through. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so here, here, here's, here's my uh, uh, path that I've travelled. Back in uh, back then, uh, uh, this was when John Howard was the uh, Prime Minister of Australia, and I predicted that John Howard, I, I, in those days, we, we started off um, with um, newsletters and um, mailing lists and, um, you know, um, private forums. And uh, anyway, I predicted loudly um, that uh, John Howard would not get past the first election. And of course, he went on to become the longest serving Prime Minister of Australia. So that sort of knocked my confidence a bit, and I resolved never again to post on the internet. And it was, wasn't until um, around about 2009 when I noticed that Google was suddenly um, altering all the profile system um, and it became obvious from, from what they were asking for which way they were heading and so it sort of was a bit of a revelation I thought well okay I don't want to be public um, but what have I got to lose um, and so from that point on I, I, I just became completely public um, my, you know, if you go to my profile, my home phone, there, my, you know, the, the business phone, um, all, all of those things are available. I must admit, my, my spam filter uh, works a bit harder these days, um, but my email addresses are, are all available. Um, and uh, you know, I don't have a large number of followers. I think I've got about seventeen k. Um, there are plenty with with more. Um, some from the you know, the suggested user list. They've got two million followers. But to me, um, seventeen thousand followers is so many. You know, it's about sixteen thousand nine hundred more than I, I would normally expect you'd anticipate to get. Um, and and look, I think um, that that I have them because I, I, I've said some um, fairly way out things, things that I, I'm concerned about. Um, and nobody drops off. Um, all of those people uh, stick by me. So uh, I, I think I followed the right path. Um, I have um, 17,000 people that I can um, send a message to and get a response from. Um, I, I don't. Th those with two million followers, they wouldn't know who they, who, who their people are, um, and they probably don't know anything about them either. Too much information? No, no, no. I mean that—that's an interesting thing because, I mean, seventeen thousand. That because the people 
look into different group dynamics, don't they? This is the, what's the ideal number of people? Sometimes I think it can be much smaller in face-to-face, -face, real world situations. And these are things that are quite important because uh, people like the military um, look into this. You know, what's the most effective number of people to work as a cohesive unit? You know, that could lead to a life to a death situation. So that's quite important. It's important in um, corporate structure. You know, what's the what, what is the optimum or the best number of people in a particular um, unit to work well together so um, that productivity goes up and so on and so forth. Um, so I think you can say that something similar must be in the operation in terms of the follower numbers too. That if you go beyond a certain point, then you lose that personal bond, the personal touch. Well, here's a, here's a funny thing. I think I can I can act on a personal level with, if not um, thousands, um, hundreds of. of um, the, the people that I'm connected with, um, and uh, um, I believe that because well, I not only believe it, I mean I do it every day. Um, uh, for some reason or another, I'll be talking to one or another person. Um, but that, that these are uh, look, I'm, I'm, do you know that that interruption thing about the phone calls we were talking about earlier on today? I've just got one of them. I'm going to have to bow out for a moment and come back sure. later. Okay, no problems. Uh, that leaves me in awkward silence. Edwin, are you still there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Talk. <laughs> <laughs> what were you asking? Uh... Oh, we were going through the 15 browser extensions. It's number two on the run list. I see. And the discussion sort of you know, went off slightly off tangent, shall we say. <laughs> I think you can only uh, manage, well, a handful of people um, to get a, a real interaction, uh, to get the, uh, to know each other. It, just a handful of people. It's not thousands. It's not hundreds. Just a handful. Mm. Yeah, I suppose the argument can be made that some people will have a very large number of followers, perhaps in the millions, but the core group of people with whom they interact would be limited to a fairly small number of people. Well, those those people use it also for uh, uh, their own marketing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they they see promote products or other um, professional stuff. So that's a little bit different than having a a, a real uh, personal connection with someone. If you want a real yeah. personal connection, uh, I cannot see you you. You can have uh, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, having a personal connection there. Yeah. At, at, some, at some point, it will become, to a large extent, one directional, uh, unidirectional. This is the right word. Um, that people follow you and you post your things and that be read or not. Really, if if within, uh, within if uh, within teams, um, if you really want to have a close team, uh, you would have less than twenty people in, um, mm -hmm. not hundreds. So yeah, so that's the challenge in a sense, isn't it? Because you have to combine that. Um, as it were, the personal side of things, sort of making you a genuine person operating on a platform, and I suppose what would be the right expression, sort of utilizing the numbers, if you have a professional reason to do so. 
or perhaps you have a big ego and you want to have a large number of followers. Well, it's always nice to have uh, plus ones or retweets or likes. Uh, if you post good content, then you probably will get that. Um, that will help your self-esteem, no? <laughs> well, of course, it's... Mm, I suppose it's confirmation, it's the validation of what you're doing. That's that's nice. I mean, you know, we're all humans. We like to have our points of view and our um, thoughts and ideas validated by other people. And perhaps it may be argued that it's even nicer when someone you don't know endorses your viewpoint. Because that shows that you have reached out to people that you don't know through your output, whether it's a, whether it's a piece of uh, um, photograph or piece of text that you, had, you have somehow managed to appeal to the person that is outside your personal sphere, as it were. Oh, good. Jim's back. So... <laughs> 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 yeah, um, well, I, I, I can imagine Masataki uh, and you too, Edwin, uh, both of you guys um, um, shouldn't be surprised when, when, when people connect with you. Um, because, you know, you, you're both sincere. Um, you don't put on airs and graces. You don't, you, don't, um, you don't try and call yourself the best. Um, like some, some do, you know, I, I'd shoot myself today that one of you started to call yourself an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, well, let's as, as long as you don't uh, produce the ultimate guide to hangouts on air, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move to that one? <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I, I think it's the only one we have left, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is um, wow. Where, where do we start with this one? This is um, a thread, and and look, I think this is deserving of um, a detailed study of, of um, a human social interaction. Um, anyway. Um, it uh, occupied a, a little bit of my time, and um, yeah, I'd like to know um, what you guys uh, have to say. While you guys are talking, I'll, I'll play uh, I'll play the the entire text of it up the screen, just in case somebody's watching this clip um, without access to our um, uh, text. Although I should point out that um, all of these items can be seen on either the Social Media Fridays community on Google Plus um, or the Social Media Fridays um, section of WCAQuestions.com. Um, and so I, I, I titled this um, um, Who Chooses uh, Who Can Call Themselves Best? Um, it, it was a thread. Uh, well, look. Let, let just give, let me give you the brief background. Um, a lady called Debbie Horowitz uh, um, created a um, hangout on air and, and termed it um, something like the um, the ultimate hangout on air or something like that. I, I guess that was a segue you were trying to throw me, um, Edwin. Um, Anyway, she did something which I think is can only be a good thing, and that is uh, um, organised um, a uh, an embed of her hangout on Forbes.com, um, and um, yeah, I, I think that's great that, that she's reaching out to uh, external audiences. Um, but I, I, I couldn't understand that the um, angst. Uh, that came out of the uh, Google Plus community, and in particular that the Hangout on Air uh, uh, segment of it. Um, you, you'd have thought that um, 
Debbie, Debbie uh, Horovitz uh, had performed a beheading or something like that. Um, but um, anyway, um, I'd like to hear your comments. You guys have got no comments, so I'll just have to turn it off. Well, I think she uh, overmarketed uh, that particular hangout, and basically she set expectations she couldn't meet. Uh, next time, um, she should be more honest about what she can achieve, and that, that's basically I think what happened is that uh, she didn't uh, meet uh, the expectations. Uh, uh, she was she uh, said she was going to do so, and people were disappointed. Basically, it's a, basically she uh, uh, she she risked that, uh, and well, that's it. Uh, the question is, whose expectation? Of the listeners, right? If you market something, uh, it, just like any form of communication, uh, you set expectations. And um, when I was going through the, the, the comments on the original um, thread, uh, people basically said that they didn't expect uh, their expectations were meet. Um, and afterwards, they really hated all those. Uh, post from her about how great it will be and um, and you so as a well-known person uh, you you have to know that if you set expectations people uh, demand those expectations right and people expect that and if the if they don't get what they uh, were promised then people are going to be upset that's normal mm -hmm. I think what would be interesting to know is what um, how to put it? What people outside the bubble thought about it. Let's say you are someone who hasn't really looked into Google Plus. You don't know what Hangouts are. Yeah. This is the first time you've seen Hangouts on air. You happen to be oh. a reader of Forbes. What would you have thought? I mean, I think we can. I think there are many elements of the Hangout, which can be legitimately criticized, for sure. But I think it would be interesting to know what in, a in, casual in observer of, thought. In terms, in terms of content, uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, the, the Hangout wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that good either. Uh, uh, personally, uh, if, if you're new to uh, Google Plus and uh, you're reading Forbes, you probably have some form of uh, uh, self-employment or uh, you have a company. You're better off at uh, our Hangout, uh, uh, which which was one or two years ago, uh, about uh, uh, business and Google Plus uh, with David Emmerland. Is it still featured on um, SEOquestions.com, Jim? It's still there, yes. It's um, actually... Uh, Still getting a great readership. Um, David Emmerland uh, gave a promo about two months ago and um, boosted up by about another 500 readers. Yeah, that's if 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 you're new to Google Plus, that's the that's the Hangout I would uh, recommend. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this Hangout uh, because she 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 also uh, uh, targets the the business users, right? And. Uh, I, I really think that, that other hangout, uh, our hangout is it's much better, uh, explains it much uh, deeper than uh, this particular hangout. So, but that's 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 my point of view. It's just yeah. another hangout on air. Uh, it's not a special, mm -hmm. great, the best hangout uh, on air. Yeah. So the content didn't really match up to the label on the tin. In the sense that it wasn't the thing that was it was built to be. No. no. 
and if you take if you take a look at the original uh, thread, uh, people are using quite strong words, and uh, I don't think that's fair either. Uh, Jim used a nice word, by the way. Jim used mutual admiration uh, society. I had to look that one up. <laughs> I wonder if um, the I mean, the shortcomings of the show, and I, I don't think there were many, um, but the shortcomings of, the, of that show, I, I wonder if people were just using them as a means to attack, um, or they were generally upset about the shortcomings. Um, I mean, given that most of the people that responded weren't uh, the average audience, they were people who um, actually make hangouts themselves and, and no doubt would feel threatened um, by, by somebody who's um, li literally leaped from them. I mean, think about it. Uh, if, if you can get um, um, a hangout uh, published on Forbes uh, in some high traffic area, um, you know, I mean, we have struggled over a two-year period to pull, you know, 200... Um, thousand minutes of viewing time, and, and you know, a one good page on Forbes, and that, that could be achieved in a day. Mike, could it just be jealousy? Well, according to the the Hangout, uh, she worked on it for eight uh, eight weeks and hundred hours. Um, so that wasn't a day. Um, Look, I, I can vouch for that. That, that, that hundredth episode, um, um, the, 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 just just the the, the, uh, the, the the basic clerical that you have to do, um, the, the um, agreements that have to be reached, and so on. Um, the last seventy-two hours before that, uh, I think I had I had about four hours sleep a night and worked every other minute uh, on on that hundredth episode. And, and finished all that I had to do about 20 minutes before the broadcast time. So, you know, when, when she says that she spent 100 hours working on it, uh, I believe her um, because it, it really does take a, a lot of time to uh, um, get those events set up. All right. Well. Yeah. Um, I think the... Walked about seven hectares, so fourteen. Thanks, Edwin. I, I I was trying to look for that button myself. <laughs> I suppose the you know, there are a few elements to it. I think which cumulatively made people very angry. The first one is that how she marketed the event. Um, by all accounts, she pushed it hard, perhaps too hard. She posted in multiple communities. Um, I think her event got uh, suspended for a period of time. It was turned private, I think, then came back public, probably due to um, multiple spam reports. So there was that element, which I think... Uh, was an issue um, maybe due to her unfamiliarity with with the Google Plus platform. It's not really the done thing in most communities to just push, push, push. So that so there, I think there's a sort of build up to that, and then it, it was in a sense hyped up to be something that it proved not to be. And then there are the individual components during the Hangout that may be um, legitimately questioned and criticized. And you know there are scope for improvements. We can all always improve what we do. So that in itself, I think, sort of individual elements, individual criticisms, actionable things, those are, in my totally legitimate um, criticisms. 
or suggestions if you like, if you want to spin it very positively. I think when things go, I think, I think in that particular thread, particular post, I do think the um, things really boiled over to the extent that it became um, it became very uncomfortable for me. I haven't. I've read most of the comments on the pedigree thread. I watched part of the hangout in question. Um, so I think it is that the strength of um, jibes aimed at the person that really made me uncomfortable. And one thing that puzzles me is that people felt that they were being represented by her. She doesn't. Okay, she may have found an established media outlet, Forbes. But well, I'm not sure why people felt that they were represented by her. I mean, that, that's the thing that I'm, I'm really struggling to understand. But what I think Jim uh, meant by a mutual admiration society is that uh, uh, in the thread people are saying, great post, yeah, we hate her too. Um, it's, it's beyond uh, normal discussion in that thread uh, to me. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's a problem when you have different groups of people. Um, you know, this is similar to what we have discussed previously with regard to SEOs to a certain extent, right? People can call themselves an expert, thought leader, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, there's no centralized regulation body. There's no certification body. That says this person is qualified to talk about this. Yeah, but but if 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 you are, uh, as Emin uh, Jones uh, says, a professional hangout on air uh, co-host or host, and then you're going to write this. Uh, this is not really professional, is it? Hmm. Professional in the sense of making a living out of it, or professional as in equality? <laughs> um, not sure if you... Uh, um, Obviously, you would hope that the people who do something professionally would have the capability to deliver that quality. Let me check his profile. Maybe he says something about it. But and, uh, the, the hangouts can be used for uh, broadcast like shows by the way uh, um, HD cameras are supported um, uh, some um, uh, voice things are uh, supported you can hook it up to um, to TriCast and so you, you can do a lot with with, with Hangouts. So you oh, can yeah. have um, broadcast like uh, shows if you want to. I think that's that's absolutely true. I think the platform is very robust, <laughs> despite teething problems that we always experience. You know, sometimes things go wrong, um, but. Yeah, I think you can make that professional in that sense of uh, producing extremely high quality, visually, hourly, and and plan really well so that you have different um, formats mixed together. So you could have screen share with perhaps a presentation. For example, when if that's appropriate. So there's, I think it's an extremely powerful platform, Hangouts on Air, 
and obviously it's but at the same time it's very and it's it is very difficult to create that kind of broadcast level. Well, you 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 see it all the time on uh, uh, CNN or other news outlets where people are brought in uh, uh, via Skype, and um, I don't see why they cannot use uh, Google's Hangout. Yeah, and then you have some grainy picture and you know, broken <laughs> <laughs> voices sometimes when you have, you know, oh, we're joined by so and so via Skype, and then you know, no one appears or the sounds garbled and things like that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, so I think <laughs> there's an issue in that that you know people are people have grouped themselves together and they have an agreement as to what constitutes a good hangout. Some are pretty clear if you like objective standards that you can measure someone against. Well, if if, if this group only uh, holds because uh, they target uh, Debbie, uh, she's called Debbie, right? <laughs> uh, no, I it's don't think early. I don't think that's that. I think <laughs> yeah, Debbie. Uh, and uh, once they make their own mistakes, their own faults, that that whole group will fall apart, right? And no, I think the um, that group probably has enough. Mm, no, I could have put it. I think they have a, they share a fundamental understanding of what constitutes a good hangout on air. So that they might criticize each other, they might be critical of each other, uh, they praise each other uh, if they've done things right. Um, but the one thing I think they do have is, if you like. A very vague notion of that platonic ideal, platonic idea of a perfect hangout on air, against which they can judge themselves and others. So they share that standard, they share that idea, which I don't think I don't think Devi Horovich necessarily shares that view. It's a different world view, if you like. And I think that's where the clash is coming from. I think that because if you set the standard, if you set the idea of a perfect hangout on air, if you share that, you can judge yourself against it. But if someone has a different set of ideas, different set of definitions, different notions, then you're not going to agree on that because you're talking on two different planes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So I think that's the problem. I think the 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 group of people on a particular thread who are very critical of Debbie. I think have a general understand uh, have oh, not have sorry share that general idea. And of course, you know, individually they might fall out against each other or between each other because that's what humans do. Um, but Nevertheless, I think there's a consensus as to what constitutes a very good hangout. And Actually, uh, um, I'm yeah. just reading uh, uh, through the comments, and uh, one person mentioned that she, uh, during uh, that particular hangout, there were already negative hang uh, comments, and she keeps on going. So that's <laughs> so. If 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 she was reading comments like. Uh, like like in this thread in in the live hangout, then uh, well done for keep going. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think I know the one you mean. Uh, uh, yeah, some some of those comments were just poisonous. Um, uh, um, very disappointing. Yeah. Well, the. the, the the, the quote is, uh, she was reading uh, the negative com uh, comments on the Hangout during the show and uh, she knew uh, uh, she was having technical issues, but she kept going and kept her cool. So. 
it's unfortunate that very <laughs> many people came out uh, with less credit than they went into that thread. <laughs> Indeed. I think that's, that's the mm, sad state of affairs to some extent. Personally, I don't... You know about it, I don't know, sorry to interrupt, but I don't know about you guys, but I came out with about 15 more uh, friends. There you go. You, you're one of the exceptions. We came up with more credit from that thread. Besides that, I don't value Forbes that highly, to be honest. Um, no. <laughs> it's not the first time people complained about the quality of content from Forbes. So. Yeah, and I think uh, it's... You know why? Since I actually read through, skimmed through the comments, but you know, I think someone came up with the idea of let's let's do our own, and really show how it's done. And I think that's the positive way to do it. You know, produce a great hangout, and you know, produce a great HOA. Perhaps try to reach out to an established media outlet, and do it. That's the best way to respond. I think I think you're right. I'm not stuck. And I think I think the cre credit to quite a few of the people in that thread. I think that's what they want to do, and they are maybe are attempting to do, and that's a great thing. I think that's in a sense that's how I would like to see people respond to this kind of situation. Okay, you can criticize people for certain things. I think that's fine, you know, because we're doing it publicly. We are subject to that criticism. People can come and criticize us and what we talk. They can take issue with the, uh, with the opinions that we have expressed. That's totally legitimate. That's part of the discourse. That's part of the debate. That's what makes this uh, Hangouts on Air interesting uh, because it's public. It's in the public area. In the public area, it's out there, and we are opening ourselves to criticisms and reactions. That's fine. Um, but when I think it goes overboard and it becomes sort of how could I put it denigration of the person, then I think it is slightly excessive. And why not turn that negative energy into something positive and show to the world how it's done, how it's done properly. And I think there is a movement of that in that thread and I think that would be great. Because as you said, Edwin, it's this the, that particular hangout would not be something that I would recommend as a first point of call for anyone who wants to know more about the platform. There are other people who I think have done a far better job than she did in her hangout. But she doesn't deserve this either. No. I think, yeah, I think it's always difficult when um, when people are selling themselves, and uh, that didn't sound right, uh, people s selling themselves in a good way, i.e. As, as a professional, that still doesn't sound good. Anyway, what I meant to say is that, you know, you're selling your skills, um, and that skills are, you closely associate that, those skills with you, the person, then the line between your personality, your, if you like, as you, the person, and the uh, professional services that you offer, the line between the two becomes slightly blurred. So genuine, legitimate criticisms of how people do things professionally in their professional capacity, can sometimes spill over into, if you like, the denigration and denial of the person. That line is very difficult to maintain at times. And I think, unfortunately, in that thread, that line was crossed. That I think that it became... And that it became attacks on the person rather than on the professional capacity that person was acting in, and I think that's where it was. I think that's where it went wrong. I think 
that's where I think some people went overboard, and I think well, that's it, where it, things were wrong. It went, it, it went wrong uh, uh, in the original post, uh, and it continues in in the the, the comments. Yeah. No. Uh, I think. Yeah. I. I think. You know. I think everyone concerned would have expressed themselves differently with with the hindsight that they now have. Yes. As, as much as I'd like to stay on um, um, Ammon's um, a good side, uh, as much as I'd like to. Uh, um, maintain friendly relations. I have to say that. Um, uh, well, I'm sure he would say that if he had his time over again, he probably would not make a post like that again. I think many people in the, in the original post included, I think, would have expressed themselves definitely. After a day or two, cooler heads prevail, and. had time to reflect, had time to sit down, think it through, and express um, their concerns and criticisms, which are legitimate. But I think the overall sort of driving force was probably anger, perhaps frustration. Very difficult to say. You know, we, we, it's impossible to ascribe to people what they felt at that time. But I think it's yeah it didn't it wasn't a measured response and i think that's that's what the problem and then people piled on to it um again i think if people had more time to reflect then people would have expressed themselves differently oh, look I, I totally agree except that um, in that thread, I mean, there, there are some poisonous toads in that thread that um, for this, uh, it's not unusual behaviour for them. And this is how they operate um, all the time. And, uh, um, you know, and that, that's why uh, to actually view those comments, I have to view the thread in an incognito browser. Um, I, I, people, people I just don't want to hear from. Um, and they jumped on that bandwagon and, and probably made it worse um, than it would have been otherwise, and that, that sort of goaded others on. Yeah, I mean, group dynamics, <laughs> it's very hard to predict, actually. I mean, we see that all the time in internet forums and threads. Right, things can go wrong. Inverted commas, um, pretty quickly, and only one or two people, you know, one or two posts, can change the tone of the discussion in a very, as you've said, positive, negative, very acrimonious way. Yeah, but I mean, this is really um, new ground for for Google Plus. I mean. We, we really, um, in the first year, you, you would never, you, you would not be able to dredge a thread up like this um, from the first 12 or 18 months of Google Plus. Um, this is a thread whether you're 4chan or, or um, Reddit. Um, uh, it's just a, um, a, a, an attempted uh, controlled demolition, if you like, of, of, of a human being, and um, certainly. Um, I mean, particularly those that commented on the actual event itself. I mean, it was clear that they were there um, to undermine um, the, um, the the actual um, um, broadcast. And uh, for that, yeah, I mean, that, that, that peeved me a lot because uh, I know how I mean how many things you have to think about when you're running a hangout. Um, not, not, I'm not saying I do it properly. I'm, I'm always forgetting something, always breaking something, always uh, feeling to do something. But um, you know, you don't need dickheads 
um, you know, running you down while you're actually doing it. I, I thought that was really bad form, and and really showed up about those people for you know, I mean, they've, they've done it before. Um, it just showed up that the sort of person that they are. Yeah, I suppose you know if you don't like it, don't watch it. <laughs> well, that, that, that's my man, that's my feeling on it. I mean, and and. Really, that's what what I would say to Amon if, if he was sitting here in front of me. Yeah, don't sweat the small stuff. Just just walk away and leave it. Um, what 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 are you doing here? You know, what are you? What is your intent? What are you trying to achieve? Um, basically, Amon, uh, you made a fool of yourself. You know, it's all very well saying. Uh, um, you know, he's. Um, you know, keen to uphold standards. Come on, mate, don't, 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 don't pull that leg. Um, this was um, a, an attempt to demolish somebody's uh, um, efforts um, in in the same field that they're in. It's just professional jealousy. And I, I don't care what. If Amon was sitting here with me, I'd say exactly the same thing, looking him straight in the eye and tell him. I'll send him a copy of this clip. <laughs> okay. Well, look. Have we uh, covered uh, this? Uh, have we done this one to death? Okay. Well, look. We we still have people watching us, and and I thank you for that. Um, it's um, you know your uh, your participation and your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile, and uh, for that we thank you very very much. Um, on the uh, Social Media Fridays community, there is a link um, in the uh, first post at the top of the page. Um, we're going to go to green room now, where we have more fun than we than you can normally see us having, and you're more than welcome to come and join us. Just go to Social Media Fridays, the community on Google+, Plus, click that, that link at the top of the page and come and join us. You, you won't be on air uh, in a moment, uh, this broadcast will be finishing, um, and um, we'd, we'd like to have a chat to you. We'd like to know what you think. <laughs> 